OK, so we have two particles, A and B, and they're connected by a light inextensible string which passes over a smooth peg. Particle A has mass 2 kilos and particle B has mass 4 kilos. Particle A hangs freely with the string vertical. Particle B is at rest in equilibrium on a rough horizontal surface with the string at an angle of 30 degrees to the vertical. The particles, peg and string, are shown in the diagram. Firstly, by considering particle A, find the tension in the string. So if we zoom in to particle A, here's particle A, OK? Now this has a mass of 2 kilos, so that means that there is a force pulling it down of mg, so 2. G. Now I'm going to be taking G as 9.8 in this, OK? So two lots of 9.8. And we're also going to have the string pulling against that, and that creates the tension force. So in order for this particle to be in equilibrium, the tension and the 2G must be the same. So T must be equal to 2G. So two lots of 9.8 gets me 19.6, and that will be newtons, OK? Part B, draw a diagram to show the, fo the forces acting on particle B. OK, so now we're going to zoom in on particle B. OK, so here's particle B. It also has mg acting downwards through the ground, and so that will be 4g. Now, it's got this string pulling against it. Now the tension in that string, okay, will be of the same magnitude as the tension there in order for the system to be in equilibrium. So that must also be 19.6 newtons. Okay. Now we have because we've got the 4G working downwards against the ground, we will have a normal um, reaction force. So we'll call that R. And because it's a rough ground, OK, we will be expecting, because the string, because we've got the particle over here, effectively pulling against that string, the uh, direction of the frictional force must be working in that direction. OK? And so this would be a diagram to show those forces. Now we could put in the 30 degrees there if we like, OK? But that's really what we needed. Part C. Show that the magnitude of the normal reaction force acting on particle B is 22.2 newtons, correct to three significant figures. OK, now because, once again, this particle B is in equilibrium, that means that the forces that are working in that direction and that direction, so vertically up and vertically down, uh, must be the same. So what do we have? Well, we've got R working upwards, OK? Plus, we've got that part of the string, the tension of the string, that is working vertically upwards as well. Now, because this is the adjacent side to this right angle triangle that we have here, OK, then we will be looking at this uh, component of the tension to be 19.6 cosine of 30 degrees. OK, that is the component that is working in the vertical direction. The horizontal one would be 19.6 sine 30 because we're working with the opposite side of the hypotenuse. So O and H, A and H here, so cosine. So this, these two forces, must be equal to 4G, the force that's working vertically downwards. So what we can do is we can subtract the 19.6 cos 30 from the 4G. So 4 times 9.8 makes 39.2. So 39.2 take away 19.6 cosine of 30. So just plug that into your calculator. And we get 22.22590209. So 22.2 newtons uh, to three significant figures, as required. 
Part D, find the least possible value of the coefficient of friction between particle B and the surface. Now, what we need to remember is that the frictional force is less than or equal to mu, the coefficient of friction, times by the normal reaction force. Okay? Now, using that inequality, okay, we can apply that here. Okay? Now, here's F. Now, for the frictional force, of course, uh, working in that direction, um, what we're going to need, because it's in equilibrium, is for the force in that direction to be the same as the one that is pulling against it. Okay, well, the, the, we've got the tension in the string going in the horizontal direction, so that was the 19.6 sine 30. That frictional force has to be the same in order for them to be in equilibrium. So that frictional force must be 19.6 sine 30. And that must be less than or equal to mu times our normal reaction force, which was the 39.2, take away 19.6 cos 30, the 22.2 newtons. So what we can do is we can divide the 19.6 sine 30 by this. Okay, so uh, if I rewrite it so that we've got mu of this side, so mu will be greater than or equal to 19.6 sine 30 all over 39.2 take away 19.6 cos 30. Okay, so quite a big fraction to type into your calculator. Let's do that, 39.2 take away 19.6 times cos of 30. And that's 0 0.441 to three significant figures. Okay, so mu has to be at least 0.441 uh, to three significant figures. Um, otherwise, the frictional force acting against B will be too small, and so it would move to the left. Okay, but that is what's keeping it in place.